Well, hello, all the friends and family of Star Vista Live, your virtual cruise host, Jason, here once again, and uh, back with another edition of All Access Pass from Home. Uh, I thought, why not have a special guest on today, someone who is, uh, for lack of better terms, a jack of all trades. This man does four different cruises for us. He does Soul Train Cruise, he does the Flower Power Cruise, he does the 70s Rock and Romance Cruise, and he also does the Ultimate Disco Cruise. Uh, this is Jeffrey Lamont Davis, better known as DJ Jazzy. Jazzy, how are you, sir? I am wonderful, and yourself? Fantastic, uh, thank you for asking. Before we even dip into who you are and, and what you mean to the cruises and kind of where you come from. We should probably mention uh, we've known each other for 16 years now, I think. Is that right? Oh, 16? 16, going on 17, yeah. 17 years. Uh, we met back in 2003-ish uh, on, on board cruise ships when we both worked on cruise yes. ships. When um, they were up and sailing. Yeah, yeah, when ships were still moving. That's right. Uh, first and foremost, tell everybody you have – when I met Jazzy, I'll say this to everybody, it was, it, it's hard to describe sometimes when you meet people because you see the way they conduct themselves in business and you see the way they carry themselves around guests. And, and sometimes you kind of question it and you're like, wow, is that person going to get away with this? Or is that person really going to do this? And you, when you watch someone do it successfully and know their trade so well, and they know their product and by their product, I mean themselves, not just what they're selling or who they work for, but they know themselves so well, they know exactly where every line and limit is. And uh, having worked with for and uh, having you work with and for me, uh, both over the years, you know, we worked together. Uh, you were my boss for a while. I was your boss for a while. We went back and forth. We were all over the board. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen anyone know the limits and the lines better uh, than you. Um, tell us a little bit about who Jeffrey Lamont Davis is and how he came to be DJ Jazzy. Wow. I know. <laughs> well, I started back when I was a young, young kid many years ago in Chicago. Uh, and I worked in the nightclubs, in the Latino clubs, to be exact. And in Chicago, the urbanism is amazing. Uh, Latin and the, um, the African-American community is pretty much together, pretty much the same, except with the Latin, you get the salsa and the merengue. But for music, for R&B, house music, um, it's all good. So Latinos are soulful, just like African-Americans. So I became very popular in the clubs. And I did some video work as well in the video clubs in Chicago. But my claim to fame in Chicago was working at the Riviera. I had two claim to fames. Uh, first was Frankie Knuckles. I used to be Frankie Knuckles, the godfather of house music. I used to be his alternate several times at the warehouse in Chicago and at the power plant. And he took me under his wing and I would fill in when he would take his, um, his vacation. So I got to get in with that wonderful. That's a big name uh, in the industry. Oh yeah, it's, 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 it's priceless. That's it's a monster legendary. name, yeah. Yeah, exactly. so anyway, I was always behind the scenes and I'm still behind the scenes and I enjoy being behind the scenes. And so Frankie um, took me in and I worked with him a bit, but I moved on and my claim to fame was working at the 3,300 capacity nightclub called the Riviera Nightclub. Similar, similar to uh, Studio 54, kind of like the Palladium, because the Palladium in New York was out mm -hmm. at the time. And then you had the, the, um, the one over in LA on Vine and Hollywood, all those big clubs with all theaters, you know, like the Rialto mm -hmm. and the Apollo, the old historic. And when you have Robert Palmer and Taylor Dane and Sylvester and Dead or Alive and Tangerine Dream and Warren Zevon and Elvis Costello, all the mixture of music in your club, you know you're big time. I got the job and it was, it's still a wow to me, it's a dream. 200 DJs applied for the job. I put on one song and a half. And this is the <laughs> truth. They told me to stop, leave, we'll get a hold of you. I'm like, okay. Like, well, that later, was a failure. <laughs> two days later, they called me. And That's then amazing. I asked them, how did I get the job? They said, well, when you took control, you asked the light guy to turn the lights out, put the smoke out. I started with the acapella. I was known as acapellas and the beats. Everyone else had a program that they already was programming or they were re 
a rehearsing. I never rehearse pretty much anything. I go on the field. I can attest to that. I've worked with you for I, 17 years. You've never rehearsed anything in your life. And you used right. to drive me crazy, but it works. <laughs> right, you go on the field and then just got hired there and I became a billboard reporter. And, you know, in the Chicago scene, it's legendary. Of course, you yes, said the godfather of house music is Frankie Knuckles, but Rafi Rosario is a good friend of mine, okay. Derek Carter. And then you have all the other ones, you know, Bad Boy Bill and, and of course, Farley Jack, Master Funk. And it goes on and on and on. We're all in that same mode. And then, you know, um, after sh in the 80s, I, late 80s, I moved to Los Angeles and worked for Trax Magazine, became a director of a music pool, which um, gave all the nightclubs their music, cassettes, 45 still, but we were transitioning <laughs> to CDs at the late 80s, going into the 90s. And I took care of all the Red Onions. If you're on the West Coast, you know what the Red Onions are. I took care of the Black Anguses, the Safari Club. And just, um, we had 125 DJs in the music pool. One day, Princess Cruises, which was based in Century City, called the music pool asking for DJs. And I kind of held on to their number. And then a couple of years later, I moved back to Chicago. And then Winter came in January and I went, hell no, it's time to go back somewhere warm. Let me call up Princess because in the, the cold cities, everything shuts down in January and February. No one goes out. You all yeah. become like a bear. And I'm like, you know what? Cruising doesn't sound like a bad thing. Called up Princess on Monday. I was back in San Pedro, California on Friday to join the ship on Saturday just by a phone call. I was on the Dawn Princess, 1991. The Dawn is, Princess. I'll never forget this. This was the year, 1991. The New York Giants, Buffalo Bills are in the Super Bowl. And who sang the national anthem? Whitney Houston. Houston. Mm -hmm. That's my key. Like, boom, I know where I'm at. So I did that five years on Princess. And that's how I got jazzy because at the time, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was out. Princess Cruises. Jazzy, my name is Jeff, Jazzy Jeff. I just told him to dro drop the Jeff because I didn't want any comparison to yeah. the real Jazzy Jeff. You know, I'm kind of like that imitation crab meat. You know, I can still, <laughs> I still can function. I still, you know, still tasty. You know what I'm talking about? I can still deliver. You'll pass. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. No one's mad. No one's mad. So uh, I brought out a few ships with Princess and with the Love Boat. The original Love Boat yeah. cast was always around. And that's when cruising was really elegant. You yeah. dressed up for the captain's gala ball with your Gucci and your Prada. All that stuff was still going on. It was amazing. So in 1996, I thought I'd take a break. I got uh, you know, homesick in Chicago. I missed my pizza, missed my hot dogs, missed my friends. <laughs> and then, you know, got tired of that again and said, you know what, I'm going to try something different. I thought Club Med was going to be the one, but they didn't have enough cash they said oh you'll love our food and you have to share a room so i tried another cruise line called royal caribbean and i worked for royal caribbean for about six and a half seven months and it was tough it was a when i went back to a different cruise line it was tough yeah. three and four day cruising out of san pedro to ensenada and back yeah. oh that's a party cruise that's a party cruise, party cruise and drunk and everything else and people then, often think that you know, it's it, people don't necessarily understand Ex explain what a party cruise is versus a normal cruise so people understand that a normal cruise people come on they drink lightly and they have fun and they dress up and they respect well, they're, you they're there for the cruise they're there right. for they're there the party for cruises exactly, but party cruises exactly they come on drinking and, and they leave drunk <laughs> They, they bring a backpack, maybe a clean pair of underwear for a yeah, three day, they're, for a two day up, cruise. They're up for three days or four days. <laughs> and good for them. You know, I'm not, we're not knocking the party cruise. It's just, it's a different, it's a different mentality. It's a different atmosphere. But also the age limit is much younger. Yeah. 17, 18, 19 year olds, and they're all graduating from high school. <laughs> so yeah. Spring so break, baby. I couldn't keep up with it. And, and if you ever travel to San Pedro down to Ensenada run sometime, it's a little rough. The Again. water's going to be rough with, yeah, if the winds yeah. are not blowing right. So anyway, um, another landmark of my decision of leaving was on August 31st of 1997, Princess Diana passed away, and I just, just got emotional. I just started crying, and something told me, you know what, 
go out and do something. Cause that's the connection I believe I had with her. That's why I broke down and started crying. So I got off the ship one day and I was just looking for a song by Moby called Every Time You Touch Me. And I used to live in Los Angeles area. And the guy said, you know, I called up my friend at the music pool. He goes, you know, this cruise line, Holland America is hiring DJs. They don't have any DJs, but they're looking for a DJ. Give him a call. Talk to Ann McAlpin. And I said, okay. <laughs> I, got off the, I got off the ship, called McAlpin. Ann. She goes, oh, when can you start? <laughs> because they knew each other. Once you're in the circle, yeah. uh, my boss was Martin Hall. Once you know the, the, the uh, princess, once you're in the circle, you're in the circle. Yeah. And I had good reviews. And then mm -hmm. Ann McAlpin hired me immediately. I started in October. And um, did 19 and a half years with Holland America Line. 19 and a half years. That's and brought out time. No, numerous ships. So I went from a small 800, 900 ship to 2,600 capacity Listen, ship. I, 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 I was honored to inaugurate a handful of ships, and I, I took you everywhere I went. I'll tell you that much. We worked, and, together, uh, we worked together almost, I mean, gosh, for, I mean, we worked on and off together, but. I mean, so just so people understand, when I, I was a cruise director and Jazzy was, a, was an assistant cruise director and a, on and off oh. cruise director and a host and a DJ and many other things and musical. Groups. I was Isaac. I had many <laughs> different hands. Yeah, Isaac. Yeah. And uh, as cruise director, you often get to pick your teams when you go to different ships and especially if you do inaugurals or anything, press releases or bigger stuff. And I only ever had one request from our director of entertainment every time I went to any ship. He's like, well, who do you want? I said, well, Jazzy. He goes, yeah, but who else do you want? I said, just Jazzy. I was like, we'll figure out the rest. I was like, no matter who you fill in. I was like, as long as I have Jazzy, we'll figure it out. We'll and talking. you know, they, they abide by your request because at one point it was just the cruise director and the host. No cruise staff. <laughs> yeah, you, you got your wish came true at one point. I, we I made of all the cruise staff and just had me and you. <laughs> what that what I remember that oh my gosh didn't like we had a bunch of people they couldn't replace people and all and but it was it was cat right wasn't it you and, and I and cat I, yes. I, I feel like cat was there and, and also was, uh Liz Scott and yeah there was there was just a couple of us though running an entire Every ship's day. entertainment department for like two weeks three weeks or something like it that was, it, it was it was doing uh, uh, the, the the transitioning cruise yeah that was bananas oh, yeah. and, and again you know there's usually you know for folks watching on a cruise ship there's usually what four four cruise staff and then a dj and then if or if not an assistant cruise director, and then you have and back kids then it staff, be a hostess too, you know, hostess and kids staff. And I mean, a, 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 an entertainment department is usually around sixty-five people, and now probably, what, we were yeah, we were musicians <laughs> and us. It was just it was not cute. We were begging drummers to help. Can you help us with the game show? Yeah, but you know that's called you know we we're gonna restructure. We want to see what's yeah. going on. And when you grow, I guess as a company and anybody who's worked in big companies, you know you go through these changes and so this that. And we've all been through that if you work for a big company, Amen. knowing that they take away, they add. What's old is new. What's new is old again. So yeah. Well, y you were talking a bit about Chicago and and you know uh, working working in the in the the disco nightclub scene. Um, when you look back at the disco era, what are your fondest memories? The, I know. The, the memories that happen every single day. I, I just can't stop thinking about it even now. It's just so much overload. While living in Chicago is, was very vibrant. The music scene was very vibrant. I am so blessed to have lived in Chicago at that time. We could play anything in any club and people would dance. Dancing and enjoying the music was probably the best thing. I could just see smiles on people's faces. The club opened at 10, they're there at 8.30 in line most nights just to hear a DJ. Chicago had some really great DJs and every club was a little different. Every DJ was just a little different. I, like I said, I love acapellas, I was soulful. I would take people to church. But then again, I could do the alternative stuff like Depeche Mode and Heaven 17 and the Smiths. And then I can do the commercial, Taylor Dane and of course the Donna Summers. So again, knowing your crowd and then the Latin. So I can mix that all in. It was just a nice seasoned variety. And that's what I, I missed variety, not just one style, but the disco had variety, which people's 
a lot of people don't understand. It was variety because you had urban disco, funk disco, disco disco. You had, I'm going to tell you a love story disco. You had instrumental disco, high energy disco, and gay disco. You had yeah. all kind of disco, yeah. but it was not just from the United States. It was all over the world. I think and that actually describes our cruise a little bit too. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's one of the cool things about, uh, and actually let's talk about that a little bit, because I called you, uh, I called you and said, you know, hey, I know you're in retirement. I know you're doing other things and you're <laughs> not, I know you're not uh, cruising anymore, but you know, we're starting this new disco cruise and would you be willing to come out and, you know, be a part of it? And of course you agreed and, you know, all of our disco cruisers know you very well. Uh, and we can talk about that for a second, but I, I want to mention that, you know, that's one of the, I think the cool things of the disco cruise for me is, and I say this on stage all the time, you know, it's not white, it's not black, it's not gay, it's not oh. straight, it's not American, it's not European, it's the, the it's not old, it's not young, it, it's, it's not male, it's not female. It's the like, world. It, the, the disco cruise just really is this all encompassing, you know, ball and it, it's just a mix of everything. And, and it, it's cool to see it, it, everything just works. You know, it's a very happy cruise and, you know, it's yes. tough to be, it's tough to be upset to 160 beats per minute, I guess, but. <laughs> well, yeah. that, that, that was always like at two in the morning. If, and one thing about DJs back then, we went by beats per minute. So if you open yeah. the club at 9 PM, you were at a hundred beats or just under a hundred beats. And then you went to the next hour to 110 to 120. And that's where the <laughs> most of the groove was, you know, yeah. heavily champagne king type music, that groove. And then you went from 120 to 130. That means you're going up to the high energy. And by one, two o'clock, you're at 130, 140, 150. That's at sunset <laughs> people. Um, you have a cigar by Rosebud. And then at two o'clock, the theme, loving is really my game. I can't get no man hanging out at the discotheque at two o'clock. <laughs> and then at, then you start going back down, you know, to by the time you close. And yeah. um, clubs close at four o'clock in Chicago or five. You don't got to go home, but you can't stay here. Right, right. Yeah. So by back at the end of the night, you're back to that hard beat. You make me feel so sweet, you know, and don't stop the music by Yara Girls and People, you know. So it, it goes, it's like a roller coaster. Was there a, was there a, and I know this is, this is a ridiculous question. Was there a song that you remember specifically or a couple of songs, not to pinpoint one, which always had the same effect on a crowd, regardless of where you were? Was there always one or one or, I mean, as your DJ and it's like being a comedian, right? It's like being anything. You're, this song, ooh, let's try this. Oh, it worked. Fantastic. Let's try this song. Mm, people aren't feeling it. Let's go to the next song. Was there, did you have a few songs in your brain and on your, on your staples that you know were home run hitters in each different area? There were commercialized songs, of course, because let me explain. The radio didn't control the people. The DJs controlled yeah. the people. And DJs were like chefs. We're chefs. We're culinary people. We give you an appetizer. Then sure. we give you the main course. And at the end of the night, it's dessert. And you, we serve it to our guests. And if they loved your food, they would come back. They'll come back. And, you know, a Donna Summer song, Icon, that's your go-to. But then if you're in certain cities, New York, Chicago, Detroit, L.A., depending, every song had their, their unique sound. Mm -hmm. I played a lot of um, – just Chicago songs or songs that would work in Chicago or Detroit and New York, like Gail Adams, Your Love is a Lifesaver. Sharon Red, Beat the Street. Not everyone knows that song, but if you were a true clubber, you knew what Beat the Street was. You knew what Magic Bird of Fire was. Sal Soul Orchestra, that's just classic. The Sal Soul label defined a lot of what we do. That's the 10% of something. Of course, you had the Philly sound going on. So. When you have your Barry Whites and your Earth, Wind and Fires, that's your urbanism and that's your groove. But when you got into some disco like Romeo and Juliet and, and Love and Kisses, you go, whoa. When I first went to Chicago, uh, the clubs, it was the chic thing going on. I want your love. Mm -hmm. You know, the Sister Sledge sound. Mm -hmm. That's when I first started going to clubs. And I was like 15. All right. And, uh, and we could sneak in. And I was a DJ at 16 in the clubs. And I used to have to hide behind the mirrors, you know, because they were raiding clubs. That was just the way it worked in Chicago. But we, we, we got through it. But 
the go-to song was definitely, like I said, Earth, Wind, Fire, uh, your Barry, your Donna Summer. That's your commercial. But then you had, like, like I said, your Gail Adams and your Sharon Rez. And, and um, First Choice. First Choice was a Chicago song, you know, Let No Man Put Asunder, Love Thing, Dr. Love, um, Double Cross, just that sound. And there was just so many other songs like that because it was a groove. And then Lolita Holloway. You put on some hit and run, some love sensation, some relight my fire. And then hometown girl, Linda Clifford, Runaway Love, If Linda My Clifford. Friends Could See Me Now. I mean, so those had a lot to do with us. And uh, mm. me and Linda and uh, Facebook friends now. And oh, she was crazy. just a joy. We became, we, we connected immediately. We, we know the same people. For those yeah. who are on the disco cruise, Linda Clifford, Runaway Love, If My Friends Could See Me Now. And she did a few songs on the Fame album. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's a great person. Personality, amazing. What did you, and now I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm gonna out your sensitivities a little bit because I love you for it. Uh, on the first disco cruise we were on together, you you came to me at one point. <clears throat> excuse me. You came to me at one point, and you were you were on the verge of tears. You had tears in your eyes, and you were just so grateful to be there. And it was so. Oh. It, what was that emotion for you? What were you What were you feeling? And what was it like being on? Because it, and I, sh I before you answer, and I apologize. Uh, I will say this to guests. Charter cruising and these big theme cruises that we do, obviously all of you watching are, well, most of you watching are part of our Star Vista Live family. So you do nothing but these theme cruises with us, but you probably also have done or do regular cruises. So you intimately know the difference. But for those of you who've never done a regular cruise or for those of you who've never done a charter cruise, it's a very, very, very different thing. There's cruising and then there's themed cruising. And these are two different things. And having been in both ends, you and I were talking and you had tears in your eyes. And I, re I remember you saying vividly. I have tears in my is, eyes now. I remember you saying to me directly at that point, like, this is what it should have been. This is what we, this is what you and I fought for, for so long. People what were looking. Tell, yeah, tell me. Not, people, people think disco is a demon. It's, it, it's a generic word that was given. Disco yeah. has always been around and it will always be around. It's just a different form. It started when dancing, discotheque. Let's go out dancing to a discotheque. Latin Even word. though it died for a moment. There. It never died. It just <laughs> transformed and went somewhere else. It took yeah. a different direction. Yeah. Yeah. KC it, of KC and the Sunshine Band, you know, talked about that in, in, in the time I interviewed him. And he was like, you know, people said it was dead and they were throwing records in the river and burning records. And he's like, oh, at, at Comiskey Park. Yes, in yeah. Chicago, where, where all that broke out with the loop. I remember I was there. That wasn't a good thing. But again, it's kind of like, our country right now, what's going on? You have two sides. You like it or you don't. And I can actually tell the difference now because, of course, I did the disco cruise, my first one, and what it was it like, amazing. Because finally I get to see these artists who I took out their record and spun. I never got to see France Jolie or yeah. the Tramps because they never really were out in the clubs too much. But when you get to see all this entertainment, yeah under one roof in five days, nonstop. And then it's like the Funkadelics, one nation under a groove. When you have people from, we had people from 21 all the way up to 95. Yeah. Enjoying parts of my body was moving that I never knew that I had. Let's not discuss I was those parts. sore, I had to take a day off. I mean, I'm walking by Earl, from the trance, he's 80, spinning around, <laughs> and where the happy people go. The, where do the happy people go? They go on that disco cruise. That is the thing for me. It is just totally, it's a dream. Yeah. And then I'm like, how could they top it in 2020? Well, you did. It was as good or better. Yeah. And that means it was still a 10 or 11. It didn't go under. It just, you topped yourself because the people, yeah. And and like the any artist say, if the audience and the people feed you feed them and they love you, they'll take it higher. And everyone stepped up their game. Yeah. Now, real quick, I saw two Fleetwood Mac concerts last year. Two different crowds. I saw yeah. one in Portland. The crowd was not good. Then I saw them right after the disco cruise. <laughs> 
and Fort Lauderdale the very next day. That crowd was off the hook. A three hour, a three hour uh, concert in Fort Lauderdale, an hour and 20 minutes in Portland. That's a big difference. Because, well, the, it, it, well, you know. well, because the crowd in um, Florida was just a little more eccentric. They were on vacation, they were more loose. Portland, it was Thanksgiving week, I'm hungry. You know, come on with this concert. I gotta go home and get my turkey. <laughs> Well, it's amazing too because bands feel that right and they live off that you know when they have it's like any entertainer of any level knows when you've got a crowd engaged i mean how many times have you know, take it all the way down to our level how many times have we done game shows where you know we're talking on a mic and then we put the mic down and we talk to each other quietly on stage and we're like ah, let's get out of here as quickly as we can you know if the audience isn't feeling it we because you and i used to do that all the time we'd be on mics and hey everybody this is what it's going to be in about five minutes in we'd go we take the mic down and keep smiling and go, <laughs> yeah, we can take this another hour. Because we or, know the audience, right? We know yeah. the audience. Or, if they're not feeling it, if they're not laughing at that one, we plant, we plant yeah. jokes, we plant things. And you know, they only get, they don't, they're not eating it, they're not buying it. It's time to move on. We'll still make it entertaining, but this will be a 35 minute event versus, versus an a hour. two hour event or an hour and a half event. Yeah. And that's the same thing for these big bands. You know, you got Fleetwood Max and these, you know, these epic, epic groups that if, if a crowd is, for a crowd is on cloud nine, you, you play longer, right? You play a couple of closet hits, you play a couple of other things, maybe you do a tribute to somebody or something. And yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty wonderful. Uh, interesting question here I have for you now, and I'm not asking you to tell the story because I know it's personal and I don't want to go there. But you had a hell of an upbringing, and you you've led people that don't know you. It you've led a life that is very very difficult to describe uh, it, to people. It, it, I. When people ask who Jazzy is, I, I just, you know, I use, I use all the terms I can without describing that you're also all of those things having overcome a lot of things. Uh, where do you find your joy? Where do you find your ability to go out and treat people the way you do and be so kind and, and loving? I, you know, you can be a challenge. I'll tell you that right now. Um, but you are one of the most giving, loving, caring humans I've ever met in my life. And where, where do you find that? How do you, how do you harness that? Jason, I'm going to tell you, I just think it's from our good leader above. I really do. Um, growing up, I, I didn't have any love. I know I didn't. That's why I left home at 15, and we'll leave it at that. And I was on the streets for a little bit, but a, an angel found me, took me in, got me into DJing, and did some DJing, like I said, in Chicago, and my life grew. But I believe if you have it within you, it will just spread like wildfire in a good way. The Lord will take you to where you need to be. But if you need that guidance and he knows you're good, I believe I believe he will find someone to help you because there are many good people. That's what led me to Portland, Oregon for over 13 years, believe it or not. There are so many good people in the Northwest. And when I used to cruise the Northwest, the people were just a different type of people. Giving, giving, giving. That's why everybody wants to go to the Northwest, Seattle and Portland and Vancouver. It's something magical. It's like a, a melting pot for, for love. Yeah. Really, it is. That's why you look like a hippie now, because you can belt up, right? You know what I'm saying? I got this beard going. I got my beard. <laughs> but no, and the good Lord has let me shine through my music, and then through the music, you connect with people, because music is a connector. Music really tells yeah. you who you are. People knew when I was in a good mood, a loving mood, or a bad mood through my DJ, just because of the songs I chose. I used to put together stories about life and love through the music and music can do that through instrumentals mixed with vocals and so on different beats and it's how you talk to people and i always said i just want to give and that's what how, what i'm doing right now believe it or not in a different light i am a caregiver that's what i was going to transfer that into actually is you know as I'm you're a telling caregiver. the story tell us also at the same time if you don't mind kind of segueing into uh what you do when you're not with us on the cruises i work at a hospital here in spokane and Spokane, I act or spoken, okay. as as Siri says, spoken, spoken Washington. Spokane for those, who, for those that yeah. <laughs> for those who not know what Spokane is, it's on the east side of Washington State, complete opposite, 
complete opposite of Seattle. It's near the Idaho border and Montana border. So that gives you a clear picture. However, we're always in the news for a couple of things. First, I'll start back in the day. A gentleman has a number one and number three all-time holiday songs, Bing Crosby. He's from, he's from Spokane. Also, Gonzaga, the Christian College. That's always number one and number two in the NCAA, men's. Yeah. Men's basketball. Very good. Yeah. Always basketball. high ranked in basketball. And ladies and gentlemen, in June, what is a very popular day? Father's Day. Father's Day started in Spokane. Yeah. It's so those Father's Day started in Spokane? Yes, it did. Yes, That's it your did. fun fact for the month? That is my fun fact. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so when I made the transition off the cruise, <laughs> when I made the transition well, off Well, you better straighten this out. <laughs> I know. When I made back that, on the narrow here. <laughs> I made the transition off the cruise ship. When I moved to Spokane, people go, why did you move to Spokane real quick? It's because Portland got really unaffordable for me. I was yeah. never home at the time. I was home maybe two months out of the year. Yeah. Complete. So, you know, spending $1,200, $1,300, it just didn't make sense. So I wanted to stay in the area. So I chose Spokane. And at the time, I was still working on a cruise. So when I moved to Spokane, one of my good friends who lived in Spokane and, and still there, she goes, um, you need to get in touch with reality. And I never knew what she meant. I said, okay, because when you're on a cruise, you're in a bubble. Oh, you're yeah. living a dream and you're in a dream. And every day is yeah. I welcome. Yeah, yeah. And there is nothing else. If you're like this, you get written up and then you ruin my cruise. I want a free cruise. So you, <laughs> you, you had to be into this. Yeah, you're on. It's 24 hours a day on. It's and my cheeks got tired. So I got off the cruise ship I, I just told people, look, what if you played YMCA every day for 25 years? And had to and, teach them line dance. And teach them line dance and the electric slide 15 times a day and the Cupid shuffles. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You just like, okay, I'm like iceberg lettuce, no flavor. I need some arugula up in me or something. So anyway, I decided to get off the ship, ran a club in Spokane and found out the true meaning of working on land in a nightclub in a different part of the U.S., yeah. completely different than a cruise ship where everything is done for you. Now I had to make my flyers and do everything and run around in the cold. Yeah. And a lot of Facebook followers, but when it came to paying in the club, where's the money? No one had any, but you have followers. So you're paying your bands eight, $900, $1,000, and you're getting four people. So that lasted about seven months. And then I went in, worked at a bingo parlor. I don't know if I told you this. Serving, wa this. serving water and verifying bingo cards because there's no jobs for me at age 55 in Spokane, you know? I applied to be working for the city, convention hall, Broadway shows. Small net community here, if you're not in the circle, kind of like the cruise ship, yeah. it's hard to get in. And then, yeah. like you said, being LGBTQ, um, being me, a little dark, because Spokane's uh, <laughs> darkness level is 1.2. I'm the one, and then someone is partial, so they point two. You know what I'm saying? So it was just hard. And um, after working in a five-star resort at sea, I'm coming down to three, two, one, zero. It's tough. So eventually, I worked for a express which is a temp company and they got me to do uh hospital work and i was serving uh people or, or patients or food and this is a temp but the managers and supervisors liked me they read my resume and they saw something in me that i i kind of just lost the love what of what i had like you mentioned the love the caring mm -hmm. but my Leaders saw something in me and they created a position around me and a couple of other people that I work with. A concierge position allows you to dress up and be six star, to be kind to people. And I've been doing this all year, uh, 14 months now as a concierge and a caregiver. Patient services, yes. A concierge in a hospital is no, you're not getting the limousine, you're not getting that 400 bottle of, you know, Cristal champagne, you're getting 
a cup of water with some ice and a bus pass to go home. Thank you. Yeah. But that is the kindness that we do because I work for a, a wonderful Providence hospital. Know me, care for me, ease my way. That's what we do. And that says it all for me. Hmm. I want to know that person. I want to care for them. And I want to ease their way to happiness or to feeling better. And when I walk in the room or I walk in the hospital every day, people at first, because I'm in this area, thought I was a little out there. But I, as yeah, you- You're a little out there for any area, but- <laughs> But when you become um, a sight every day and they see yeah. that you care, you're dressing up with a tie and you carry yourself and how you- bring sunshine to people. When I walk in the door, people could be on a respirator. And I walk in, they're like, ah! They're still alive. But yes, they yeah. see. Ah. Mm. <laughs> they're a ray of sunshine for the most part. But, you know, a lot of people are drugged up and stuff. So, you know, again, is it Jeff Davis, the jazzy? I don't think I ever give jazz delicious in the hospital. It's just <laughs> as far as Well, yeah. okay. Now, since you went there, we got to talk about it. Uh, but... <laughs> What he means by that, folks that are watching this, Jazzy and I go way back. So please understand that. This is not an inconsiderate thing, and Jazzy will vouch for this. Jazzy and I go so far back that uh, Jazzy is a man of many, many masks, and he is a man that can deliver many different products. I think, you know, any good entertainer, any good uh, personality, a stage personality, knows when they need to be the biggest and the brightest, and knows when they need to be uh, normal, demure. Uh, and normal's not the right normal. word. Dem no, demure. I got you. By normal, I mean really in reality, most people aren't big and bright. Most people are, you know, most people tend to operate at a lower level. It's just because most people aren't stage bound like yourself. So you and I had had a, a scale going back some 15 years that when we would run events, we worked for a cruise line that had parties and did their things. And we did some big stuff. We did some big fun stuff. But we also worked with clientele that often wasn't really that big and out there. So sometimes we would have to throw these big, massive entertainment parties. And sometimes we would throw a little bit more demure, a little quieter parties. And so Jazzy and I would have the same discussion every time before, while we were creating the event. He would look at me or I would look at him. And our scale was, is this Jeffrey? Is it Jazzy? Or is it Jazzalicious? And Jazzalicious was the name I gave you for the full out there, full experience, singing, dancing, costumes, boat. God only knows what you'd come out on stage in. And that's how we would engineer all our events that we did together is the last question was, okay, so is this, uh, he'd have his little papers and be like, is this, uh, is this Jeffrey, Jazzy, or Jazzalicious in your mind? I'd be like, mm, this is probably a Jazzy event. So, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, Jazzy. That makes sense. Or we'd discuss it. You'd go, I don't know. I think this is it. We'd have our chat. So, anyway, that's what that means for people watching is we would decide if an event was a Jeffrey event, a Jazzy event, or a Jazzalicious. It's event. like when you're cooking. And it's like, do you like it? You want it mild, <laughs> you want it spicy, or you want it hot? And that's kind of what it is. Now, on the, the ultimate disco cruise is hot because that's who we and I am. And when when I called and, you to offer you the contract, that was my first words to you. Was I, this is Jazzalicious. This is five days of Jazzalicious. So. And, and speaking of our ultimate disco cruise, I come to love and we're, we're messaging and texting a lot of yeah. our followers wondering if we're going to be on the cruise in 2021. They really want to go. Yeah. And, you know, and, I, and I, that's why I texted you and you said, yeah. everything's go. Everything is go. You know, it's that's the number one question we get, obviously, as a charter company is, and I say we, I contract in, but, you know, as part of the Star Vista family, it's the number one question Star Vista gets is, well, are the cruises still happening? You know, we've got, we've got malt shop in November, and then you've got other cruises wow. starting in January, February, March, you know, and, you know, they're like, well, give us more answers. And, you know, it's kind of interesting because you have all people, you know, you folks watching, you have all the answers and all the answers are very simple. It's that we don't control when the world opens back up. We don't control when cruise lines go back to business. If they go back to business, when, let me rephrase that, when they go back, they, of course they will. By if, I mean, if and when the day happens here soon, whether it's in the next month or the next three months, cruise ships are going to be heavily regulated. You know, you and I have gone Changes, through- Changes, man. Yeah. You and, I have, you and I went through what was called the norovirus scares, right? 
when norovirus first became a thing, and it, it was a thing forever, but when it first really became recognized, people said it was a cruise ship illness. It wasn't a cruise ship illness. It was more prevalent in daycares and in nursing homes than it ever was on cruise ships, but yeah. cruise ships have, have a, you know, our cruise line specifically had a, a slightly elevated aged guest, a guest elevated in age. I call them it, seasoned. Seasoned, if you will, had a seasoned <laughs> cruiser, and we also had kids. So anyway, we went through that, and we watched how much cruise ships went through to make sure that they were safe and that, you know, that, that you couldn't catch these different things. And and people were terrified of cruise ships for a minute. And I'm not likening COVID-19 to, to norovirus, but the scare factor for people coming on ships, we used to hear it right when people would walk on board. Well, what are you doing to, to you know, does this ship have this, you know, norovirus? And are you guys, what are you doing to da, 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 da? And, you know, it was one of those deals where we watched cruise ships go through all the different uh, steps of how to treat the buffet lines and how to, how to treat handshaking lines and how to treat, you know, how often do you Purell and where do we put the hand sanitizer, the Purell hand sanitizers and, you know, how do you, how do you do what's called super sand? You know, do we have a Virox? A Virox was the, the virus, uh, the liquid that was created and put on, uh, remember it was those little, uh, yes. those wipes, the Virox, Virox, wipes. Virox. Virox wipes. Yeah, man. So we had Virox was the created uh, solution and the cruise lines didn't create it, you know, chemist somewhere created it in the lab or, you know, a scientist. And that was what we treated with. And we super sand. So we super sanitized ships. So after big events, we, we, we oh. super sand so much. The leather went out of the word leather. It, I mean, it was, because it just eats to in your hands. <laughs> your hands oh are just goodness. horrible at and, the end of super sand. And for those who've been on cruise ships, you know, it's pretty high, high end with leather poles and seats. Yeah. And <laughs> we were scrubbed up from top to bottom and by, the fifth yeah. scrubbing, we have to replace all yeah. of the leather chairs and, and, and all the poles and, and, and all that because this stuff was very potent. Yeah. The, it's good though, but it was good. The, the it, metal, it was, the metal yeah. in the, uh, on the railings would even fall off because <laughs> yeah. it was so high rocks. <laughs> and the, the whole point of saying that is that, you know, when clean. cruise ships, it was clean. And when cruise ships get back to operation here, which, you know, everyone is saying is going to be, you know, uh, mid-May to mid-June, somewhere in there. And you, you'll see, you know, in talking to people in the industry, you'll see a slow roll, right? I'm sure you've talked to folks as well. You won't see 65 ships all of a sudden in full operation. Every cruise line will start with one or two ships. And then they'll rotate to three and four and five, and they'll just slowly- Build the confidence again. And you'll also see cruise lines start going places that are easier to control in terms of the sanitation, in terms of- doctor and hospital access in terms of you know you'll see a lot of private island usage uh you'll see a lot of things like that where the cruise lines have control uh the reason i say any of that is when the cruises open up they're going to be massive changes from what you remember you know i i'm i'm willing to bet that gone are the days of self-service food at least for a long time you know uh, a lot of that's going to change. You'll be served. You'll be handed things. You won't be able to hand your plate over. They'll they'll patience, do it all. Man, you got to have patience. Gotta have and, patience. Distan and distancing. And distancing. And it's all a good thing, you know. And so with all that said, I want to say this to the Ultimate Disco Cruisers, the Soul Train Cruisers, the Flower Power Cruisers, the Rock and Romance, Malt Shop, all everybody that, you know, uh, Sandy Beaches, uh, every every cruise we, uh, Star, Vista La Star Vista operates, when the charters or when the cruises become activated again you're going to be in an incredibly safe environment and it, it, it's going to be heavily regulated it's going to be very safe and it's going to be up to you personally you know every guest is going to make a decision as to whether or not they they choose to do it of course but we do it we'll be on board i'll be there right now every cruise planned for next year is full go i mean there's no reason to expect that a year from now we won't be in full operation you know, we're still full go right now. We're planning everything for our November cruise as if it's going to run as normal. And fingers crossed it does. If it's, you know, we, we have full faith in, in, in the, uh, the cruise lines uh, out there, you know, the CLAA, I believe it's called, um, CLIAA. Uh, we have full faith that when the cruise lines are in operation, you know, they're going to be ready for people and they won't open otherwise. Jason, can I say this? There's a couple of things I want to say. I want yeah, to say of course. Um, during these tough times for a lot of us, yeah. and I, I have people who have reached out because of what I do, and yeah. and I've had friends who have lost jobs and won't get jobs, and they're yeah. on unemployment. 
um, I'm always saying a prayer for you and some blessing. But I want to let everybody know we will come back stronger but different. But this is what I believe in my heart. This was a reboot, reset, reflect, so we can reconnect and recharge. Out of this horrible event has come some kindness. Yeah. Every day at the hospital, we get gifts from our area restaurants who are not who are not open. They're donating the food. Yeah. People making masks. Yesterday, our first responders of Spokane came to our hospitals and uh, thanked us, and we Those thanked them. Pictures. What a parade of thank yous! Yeah. So that reflect and reconnect is the kindness that we kind of maybe lost. Um, yeah. And just so some soul search and re let's change it up a bit and get back to what we're, what it's all about. And that's why I know the disco is in my heart because that's what we always did. We always connected and that music mm. made us reflect the good times. So this is going to be very powerful. The next disco cruise for sure is going to be very, very so powerful. And very so too. Powerful. Yeah. And uh, it's a great message. And I appreciate you sharing that. You know, and people... I want to say one thing um, when people go, you worked on the cruise, blah, blah, because they get the wrong message. I want to say, I want to let you know, 25 years on a cruise ship, I would eat off the floor. I really would if I had I to. Yeah, It Amen. was the cleanest. And it was not the cruise ship. Again, it's the people. Yeah. People, wash your hands. Okay. Wash other places too, but wash your hands. <laughs> Stick with hands for now. Yeah, it is. It is. It's interesting. It's just like, I mean, I keep going back to norovirus, you know, but it's a cruise ship disease. No, it's not. It's not a cruise ship illness. It's, you know, and, and I'm not picking on anything or anybody because honestly, everyone needs to react the way they feel comfortable reacting mm -hmm. and everybody needs to respond the way they feel comfortable responding. And I, I can't take that away from anybody. And I've said this for a couple months of interviews now is, you know, you've got people that are that are underreacting and people that are overreacting, right? You got people that don't care and are gonna are not gonna socially distance. They're not gonna do anything they're supposed to. They're just gonna do life as normal. And then you've got the other end, which are bunkered up with all the toilet paper and all the canned food in the world, right? And then you got all the folks in the middle going, I don't really, you know, we've got a little bit of this in us, but we got a little bit of this in us. And you know, you're trying to wear your mask and you're trying to socially distance and you're trying to be considerate and you're trying to, you know, give everyone their space and you know, every company you call and it says, you know, we're high volume, we can't take a call. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a unique time. It's a very unique time and everyone's going to have to deal with it kind of as they see fit. And I, I believe wholeheartedly that you're correct, that once we get moving here again on cruise ships, I mean, I said it a moment and I'll say it again, cruise ships won't, they're, the government, everybody is not just going to say, yeah, go ahead and start cruising again. Right. As it was. I mean, it, it's going to have, it's going to have a whole new list of rules and regulations. People are going to get checked in the terminal. I'm sure. I'm sure that as you walk in the terminal, you're going to get your temperature taken. I'm sure you're going to have things like that. It's going to yeah, have to I have it. to do that every day. And don't forget, I'm yeah. in the front line of this Yeah. In the hospital, you know, ICU and, 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 and hearts and everything. We're, the caregivers, anybody that works in this field from the nursing homes to the hospitals, to the urgent cares, we're right in the forefront. Why do we do it? Because of who we are, we love people. We want to make people well. It's like if, I, if it was all about just the corona or whatever, I'm like, I'm staying home because they have offered that to yeah. us. If you feel uncomfortable, you can decline to go to work. But sure. I choose not to decline because I want to make people happy. I want yeah. them to, to be well. So no, you know. Well, you're a good human. Thank you. So good real human. quick, um, I know we got to round this up because I have to actually be on my way to work. You got to go to the hospital. Um, yes. So I was just wanted to say what my friend said, I was disconnected. I understand. It took me to go back to the New Amsterdam on the Soul Train cruise to finally find out what she meant was I was disconnected. So when I went back to the ship that I left in 2016, ironic, the New Amsterdam. I talked to the captain, the cruise director, um, some of the maitre d's and restaurant people. And I knew them all after being there for so long. Yeah. I finally knew what she meant. When I walked on board, it was, hi, we haven't seen you. Where have you been on another ship? Oh, what are you going to do in port? That was kind of much what the conversation pretty much is because that's what we're programmed to do. 
And that was it. So every time I would come home to Portland or wherever I was at, I was always telling them about my adventure. Well, when people are living the real world, they don't always want to hear about your adventure. <laughs> and I was, I would just little say they're a little bit of jealous because sure. you're always somewhere smiling, somewhere beautiful, right. you're taking a good shot. So that was the disconnect. I had nothing really in touch with her that we could connect. But now that I've been off ship since 2016, I can tell you, I'm connected. <laughs> I'm not 5G, I'm 8G. Yeah, you're, you're full LTE service. <laughs> Listen, I don't want you, most importantly though, and, and where, I, where I agree with you wholeheartedly when you say that there is a disconnect between, you know, living the life that we used to live. and we, It was a great life. life. Oh, absolutely. I you mean, know, we I, worked with 75 dish, different nationalities. Yeah. We got along. Yeah. Whatever your lifestyle was, it, we came together. No mm -hmm. arguing, no fighting. We lived in the bubble. We gave everybody what they wanted. It was a good time and we made it work. And that's yeah. made me a great person. I can go anywhere. Like you see, I'm in Spokane. I finally fit in. But I had to come off my high horse and balance it out to Spokane and Jeff. And, yep. and people do know me here as Jazzy, by the way. I, <laughs> well, of course they do. <laughs> but no, know you, you, everywhere you, you have to balance out, you know. Um, but it takes time. It took me four years yeah. to... I mean, because I was going to move back to Chicago. I really was. I yeah, missed I the culture. I missed the good food. I missed the neighborhoods. And or Portland. Portland is a ma major food city. And people go, why Portland? I said, well, Portland has all these uh, tech companies, Microsoft, Adidas, Starbucks, and so on. So they're, they're, the people who come here are very worldly. They're very international. Yeah. So that's what makes Portland so unique. And I moved there because I was single and who I was. And Portland was very accepting to that. It's, it's a, it's a, keep Portland weird is their model. And now I know why. <laughs> yeah, it can and that's be. why you look weird with that beard. You love it. You love my I beard, do. Jazzy. I'm, I'm going to call you scruffalicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the, way, by, the, by the way, how are the babies and the kids? And the, the kids are their two dogs. Like yeah, that. yeah. Our babies, our kids are our two dogs. They're great, actually. Uh, Brittany uh, just took them upstairs because they are, there's a squirrel in the backyard, and Lucy, it's her nemesis. Uh, this squirrel hangs out in her backyard every day, and Lucy loses her mind every time the squirrel comes in. And so this whole interview would have been from the corner. So they have to be upstairs, but they're good. They're happy. They're healthy. They're actually probably better because they're getting more attention from us than yeah. they. You know, we love our they're dogs. Happy. The happiest people right now are the dogs. I dogs, see them yeah. walking with their tail <laughs> wagging their head, their, their, their head out the window, smiling and yeah. giving us the look. See? Mom and dad is home. Mom and dad are home. And, and yeah. they're getting they're getting rubs on the stomach. I mean, they're, they get walked four or five times a day. That's an excuse to get out of the house, by the way. That's what we do. Listen, yeah. uh, I know you're headed off to the hospital. Uh, any last words for all our friends and fans watching or anything you'd like to share with your friends and fans out there? Yeah, you know, stay well, stay positive. Um, and when we get back to rocking the boat, as Amen. we say in the disco Amen. world, it's going to be awesome. And it's going to be, a, this will be a re, re, as Peaches and Herb would say, reunited. And it feels so good. And it feels you know, I'm leave so it on that. good. Yeah. Jazzy, I love you, buddy. I appreciate you uh, taking your time this morning before heading to work to, uh, to jump on with us. Uh, you be safe. You be smart. You wash your hands. You wear your mask. You're in a hospital, sir. Uh, I don't want to hear any bad news coming out of Spokane. Uh, let's be in touch soon. And I thank will. you very much. I, and I thank you for uh, letting me do this, this wonderful interview. And uh, again, we'll see you around letting you. I appreciate you being a part of it. All right. Well, let's say goodbye to everybody. Thank you for tuning in, my friends, and watching that man next to me right there. That is Jeff Davis, a.k.a. Jazzy, a.k.a. Jazzalicious. I'm your virtual cruise host, Jason. Thanks for tuning in once again. Keep your eye on this channel. More content coming soon, I am sure. Regardless, if you are part of the Soul Train Cruise, the Disco Cruise, the Flower Power, the Rock and Romance, or any of the wonderful cruises that Star Vista Live does, we'll do our best uh, country cruise uh, vault shop. I I don't want to forget any. I don't want to claim my name <laughs> them all. There's so many. There's I think there's eight now. 
Uh, regardless of what crews you partake in or how many of them you partake in, keep an eye on these channels. We'll have some content uh, ranging and, and interesting to all of you over the next uh, coming weeks and months. So uh, fingers crossed we get through this quickly. Wash your hands, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, I guess we'll see you on the other side. Reunited and it feels so good. Thank you, Jazzy. Have a wonderful day, my friend. And for all you folks watching, have a great day. I'll see you around. Excellent. Thank you. Bye-bye.